Hello everybody, I'm Bev Rowan and I'm the NHS Bursary Relationship Manager in Health Education and Improvement Wales. I'm sorry I can't be with you today to share this uh, presentation, but I wanted you to have this information um, and to know how to contact us uh, for anything else that, that uh, arises during your studies. Um, Congratulations on getting your place in, in your university um, and I do hope that over the next few years it's enjoyable and that you are successful. What I want to do today as part of your induction talks is, is to just share with you some of the thoughts about the bursary. Um, we can't cover everything in this short presentation and I have got some PowerPoint slides that you can refer to and, and they'll be available uh, for anyone who, who wants to refer back to it. But we are starting to try and uh, link and engage with first year students so that uh, you do know about the bursary and that you make an informed choice. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just talk briefly through some of these PowerPoint slides and um, and just um, share with you, as I say, some of our thoughts uh, that have cropped up for us whilst we've been um, liaising with probably thousands and thousands now. So these are the slides that um, I would normally use if I was doing a face-to-face -face presentation, just to guide me um, with uh, the process of sharing with you some key information. What I'd like to do is to enable you, after listening to me today, to know how you can contact us. And I have an initial contact with you. This uh, is for first year students. I'd like you to um, understand what the bursary is um, and the commitment that you are making if you choose or have chosen uh, to take the bursary. So I want to just clarify in simple terms what the bursary is and, and what it isn't. Um, if you are still thinking about how to fund your studies, then hopefully this short talk that I'm sharing with you today will help you decide. And if you do take up the bursary, we would like to stay in contact with you throughout your studies and throughout your time working in the NHS once you qualify. So it's really important that you know how to contact us um, and that there is a HEIW team here. It's a dedicated team, myself and uh, two administrators, um, and we're here solely to help and engage with you during your studies and during the time that you've got your bursary. So I'll start off by um, thinking about you as a student and then the other bit I'll share with you is when you've qualified and you're a graduate and you're working somewhere in Wales, probably in the NHS. So as a student, first year, you've got to make some important decisions about how you're going to fund your studies. You may have already taken the bursary, but even if you have, you should be aware that you've got 10 weeks from the start of your course, so from here, um, to withdraw if you've decided to take the bursary. After those 10 weeks, it is, it is possible, but not within an academic year. So what I'm going to share with you now is some thoughts about if you have already decided or if you are still thinking about it. Now, the bursary gives you money to help with your tuition fees and it gives you some money uh, to help you with your living costs. But it is a different amount of money to what you would get if you went down through a student loan. So you need to decide, will you be able to live on the money that you're going to get? Because there's maintenance grants, which will be means tested. There's a straightforward £1,000, which you will have automatically. And of course, a big, big investment. You'll have your tuition fees paid for you. But nevertheless, with the cost of living and with your circumstances, you may have children, you may um, already have a mortgage, your unique circumstances, only you can decide, will you be able to live on the money? What's the difference between the money that you'd get if you take the bursary and other funding streams? Make sure that you fully understand so that uh, you don't afterwards think, 
oh, I thought I'd get more money um, because uh, I didn't really understand or somebody said, it's really important that you make these choices about what is available if you choose something else other than the bursary. However, the bursary, as far as I'm aware, is the one that will pay all of your tuition fees um, without a tie-in or a commitment other than two years uh, to work in the NHS. Will you have other finances to fall back on? So, for example, if you took the bursary um, and things get a bit tough in year two or even three, um, are, have you got any other finances? Are you prepared to possibly work? But if you work, is that going to interrupt with your studies? Because your main aim is to do um, your, the, the course. It, it's, it's to qualify um, whilst you're in universities. So it's OK. And lots of people do have um, supplementary jobs. But as long as uh, you feel that you can cope with that, as well as all the commitments uh, that will come along with um, with your training. So. They're the important things that I would like you to at least consider when you choose to take the bursary. Now, the bursary for in return for all that investment asks that on qualifying you work in the NHS or in Wales in certain other organisations such as local authorities or even private healthcare. We ask that you do that for um, two years if you're on a three year course and 18 months if you're on um, a different uh, course. So what does that mean? Well, it's a commitment in return for the investment that we will give you. We ask that you consider working anywhere in Wales. So if you've got limitations on your location of where you think you'll be able to work, for example, um, you've got children in school, you're, you're caring um, for, um, for people, uh, maybe you don't drive, maybe you've got some health or some disabilities, things that may, when you come to apply for a job, they may limit your choice in where you can apply to, and they may limit your actual ability to get a job. Um, usually, uh, employers will make uh, adjustments anyway if you have some limitations, but uh, the main one is, are you able to relocate? So if you're if you're just training, if you're training in one, say, university, say Swansea or Cardiff, um, are you going to be able to consider going to work for West Wales, uh, North Wales, um, Powys uh, Local Health Board, for example? So think about fast track three years hence or two years hence when you're coming out and you're looking for a job in order to comply with the terms and conditions of the bursary. Think about your preference for a job. Is it going to be in, in an area where lots of people are going to want that particular job? Is it, going to, is it going to be tougher for you to try and get that job in that particular area? Certain specialties, there's usually fewer jobs than people coming out and vice versa. So think about it. Will you be able to do a rotational job or are you only going to want to do um, a role in, say, one site? Um, do you want part time? Uh, can you do shifts? Uh, will you be able to do a permanent uh, a job? These are the sorts of things that you need to be thinking about when you're coming out of your course. And they may not be at this moment in time. They may may not be, you know, at the forefront of your mind because you're just starting your course and you've got a, a, a long way to go. An important thing about the bursary is that whilst we would like you to work in Wales, we hope that you're successful in your studies. The bursary is not a guarantee that you will get a job. So it may be in a few years time, the jobs may not be there in the right place. Or they may be, um, we don't know. So it's important for you to understand that by taking the bursary, we can't guarantee the job that you want in the right place that you want. But hopefully 
for the majority of the people who take the bursary, that does actually happen. So think about now and can the, is the bursary the right option for you while you're studying? You will make a commitment to work for the in the NHS once you've qualified. Are you going to be able to do that? Um, are you able to relocate if necessary? If the job that you want doesn't come up in your immediate preference and location. Now, fast tracking again to your coming out of your studies. We require you to work in Wales. Oh my goodness, I can't. Life has changed in the interim. So we recognise that. Um, and there is an opportunity and a process in place where you can uh, talk to us, contact us and say, I know three years ago I signed up for the bursary and my expectations were this, this and this. Life has changed. What do I do about it? I don't think I can comply with the T's and C's. Don't worry, we have this system in place where you put in a review and there are three categories that we will consider. Obviously, if there aren't sufficient jobs or you've tried and you failed to get a job, then we can't hold you to the terms and conditions, particularly if there's not enough, not enough jobs. On the other hand, you may become ill or you may have different life circumstances. You might have caring duties that you didn't foresee when you first started your course, or in fact, you had poor health yourself. Um, these things we would take into account and say, OK, we wouldn't hold you to um, the commitment to work in Wales, which is what we we loosely call the tie in. Um, and there is a process for that. Um, and there's loads of information about it on our website. But don't worry about that. But I do think it's important for you to know that we recognise life changes and how your aspirations and your world is now may not be in three years time. So finally, I'd just like to share with you possibly a really the most important um, um, piece of information. We are here in Health Education and Improvement Wales. As I said, we're a dedicated team for our bursary students and our bursary graduates. And as you can imagine, that's thousands of students. We're here to answer your queries, we're here to give you support, and we also have on our web page um, a frequently answered question document, which I know course tutors um, and uh, policy makers, everyone is well aware of the FAQ document. I would um, I would recommend that you, you go to the FAQ if you got some first queries. If it doesn't answer your query, then we're here with that email. And if you've got questions or queries about your money, the bursary, your payments, then it is not me and my team. It is student awards, um, which you would be dealing with anyway um, because you've made your application for, for the bursary and they are the ones who coordinate with your university your payments. So it's important that you understand that if it's about your your actual payments, your process of applying, that isn't the HIW bursary team, that is student awards. So just finally, I hope this has been helpful for you. As I say, I'm sorry I couldn't be with you in person, but this is our email, uh, hiw.bursary at wales.nhs.uk. Um, we don't answer direct telephone calls. Uh, that is our confidential uh, inbox and we aim to answer queries within a few days. Uh, we look at it every day, myself and my team. Um, so we'd like to think that we're pretty good in getting back to you with your queries. And then there's a whole host of documents, the FAQ I referred to, the terms and conditions and any newsy things that we might put up now and again. That's on the HIW website. And if you just search bursary, it'll take you straight to it. Finally, then, I'd just like to thank you for listening to this. I hope it's been useful and good luck with your studies.